at first glance lots of us think that things are getting bigger bigger planes bigger tankers vaster refineries and chemical works but are they here at Windsor, the Great Castle houses a minute and much cherished national treasure. All through history, man has had an instinctive love for little things. There is great beauty in smallness, and nowhere is it shown more charmingly than in what is undoubtedly the outstanding miniature of our age, the Queen's Dolls House. This lovely work, whose architect was Sir Edwin Lutyens, was the nation's gift to Queen Mary 40 years ago, and literally hundreds of artists, experts and craftsmen contributed to create a little dream world of perfection. Everything works, everything is to scale, an inch to a foot. The dining room walls show real paintings by the leading artists of the day. The toy chairs are three inches high, the silverware lovely enough for any doll. In real life, kitchens are certainly getting smaller. We just couldn't cope with cooking ranges of that size these days. But in the doll's house dream world, everything is perfect and not a detail is overlooked. The coffee grinder works, though it's less than half an inch across, and there's running hot and cold water at the sink. The Queen's bedroom is a gem, the coverlet embroidered with seed pearls, the carpet hand-woven tapestry. Every little ornament is to scale, and the ceiling has been gorgeously painted down to the finest detail. But all this is a world of fantasy made for a queen, yet in real life things are also getting smaller. As space gets scarcer and more valuable, so modern furniture is simpler and much less bulky than it used to be. No old-fashioned dressing table for this girl. She solved her space problem with a flat in which she gets two ultra-modern rooms for the price of one. Furniture comes up from the floor and the bed folds away. She can even change the wall round when she wants to and all at the press of a button. The great houses of the past are indeed things of the past. Monuments to a more lavish age, so vast that most of their owners nowadays have to live in a few rooms in a wing or a cottage in the grounds. They aren't practical anymore. The great homes of today are designed not for one family, but for hundreds or even thousands. More perhaps than anything else, these massive building blocks have solved the problem of the space famine in the space age. It's the same thing with gardens. They're getting smaller, all right. Some of the historic ones still remain, living and lovely museum pieces. But no one, surely, could afford to build them today. But our traditional love of gardens lingers on, even in the window box and the tub outside the muse flat. While everything seems to be changing, one thing's remain very much the same, shopping. It's still one of the things a girl really enjoys. Now here's just the right little case for a weekend in the country. Things are getting smaller. Great grandmama would have needed a trunk. Instead of this, the old lady would have had something halfway between a tent and a mainsail. As for these, well, Grandmama would have blushed at the thought of them. Slippers, the lot, a complete weekend outfit, all tucking into a case that would just about have held the old lady's hankies. And here's some more gadgets. Alarm clocks are certainly getting smaller these days. And remember the radio sets of even 10 years ago? This little gadget is mighty different from the old plate camera. And think of this lot all in one small weekend case. Blouse, skirt, cocktail dress, all the fripperies, slippers, record player, records, radio, clock and so on. Why, old grandmama would almost have needed a pantechnicon. Come to think of it, bicycles are getting smaller. 
Maybe the frames are roughly the same, but the latest idea is to mount them on much smaller wheels. It all takes up less room in modern traffic. Here at Morburn is a scientific wonderland of what is called micro miniaturization where you could say that things are getting smaller in a big, big way. This is a saw that works by a thin wire, cutting out minute electronic circuits. Here is a group of conventional valves, mounted on a chassis looking like the works of any old-fashioned radio set. Here is its transistorized equivalent, a mere fraction of the size. Here again is a miniaturized version of the same thing. This little chap is one of the smallest amplifier units in the world. It can do precisely the same job as the big box of tricks with the old thermionic valves. Here's an everyday modern computer unit. And here's its mini version. It's exactly as good and think of the space it saves. But that's almost big by comparison. For here are nine transistors mounted on a pin's head. Such a tiny assembly could work a radio pill that might help a surgeon to save a human life. Or it might run a highly specialized radio set. This is a world where sizes can be compared with the thickness of a human hair. Yes, in the research world of Morven, things are getting smaller all right. The transistor has played its part in revolutionizing the deaf aid. In the old days, the deaf carried an ear trumpet, like this silver one, 150 years old. Or they even sat in special chairs, like this one made for the King of Portugal in 1819. You spoke up the arm, and the deaf king could hear the vibrations. Today, this little gadget does the trick. Yet, even in the new days of micro-miniaturization, the treasures of the Queen's doll's house remain just as remarkable as ever. This minute railway guide is but one of the scores of reference books. The tiny volumes pack the walnut shelves. Many of them contain handwritten manuscripts by famous authors. There is even an exquisite little collection of more than 700 drawings and watercolors by leading artists, kept in two choicely constructed toy-sized cabinets. In the dreamlike world of miniature, nothing but nothing seems to have been overlooked. This is a wondrous thing, this house, yet it still has the air of being what it is, the perfect toy. More than anything else, it's fun. Here's the garden, another little masterpiece. The lawns are made of velvet. The flowers were checked with Kew Gardens and each leaf was shaped by hand. Of all the treasures of Windsor, the Queen's Doll's House is perhaps the most loved and lovable. Outside, in the workaday world, is the castle's Henry III Tower. It was once the home of one family. Now it's being turned into flats. Yes, wherever you look, it's the same story. Space gets more precious, and so, in hundreds of different ways, things are getting smaller.